Hello. So today we're going to talk about talk about the common common emitter emitter amplifier. So with a uh, well that's that's the circuit classic classic circuit I should say. So this is the transistor NPN. So base collector emitter. We have the uh, like a voltage divider bias R1 R2. Input is here. Right away we have a coupling capacitor C1. You have the resistance of the, at the collector RC, resistance at the emitter RE. So that's the DC side. This is the AC side, and this is the output at the collector at the collector. So uh, it's one eight, 180 degree out of phase is the input, and hopefully it's going to be it's going to have a bigger amplitude. So uh, I'm going to. I'm going to do this in two two videos. So this is part one and part one is only going to be talking about the DC. So it's going to be DC analysis. In particular, we're going to figure out the values for R1, R2, RC and RE. The value for R3 as well as the values for the C1 and C2 are going to be in, are going to be done in the second part which is AC analysis so when you do the DC analysis uh, this capacitor is becomes open so you can get rid of all this part and this branch uh, you can remove it because C2 is open so this whole branch you can remove so now you redraw the circuit you redraw the circuit if you redraw the circuit DC in this for a DC analysis it looks like this so you don't have that branch anymore and you don't have the capacitor here in the input so that's how it looks like so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to derive the equations for IB. So what is IB? IC. And I'm also going to get the equation for VCE, which is this one. VCE. Okay. So we're going to do that right now. And I'm going to I have to get another board to do that. So okay, so let's switch boards. Okay, brand new board. So the circuit looks like this, okay? Okay, so you have R1, R2, RC, RE, PCC top, ground bottom. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to re, re, draw it. Because I, I'd, I want to isolate that uh, voltage divider part. So I'm going to redraw it like this, and it's the same thing. So this is a voltage source, so it's VCC. VCC. And there is going to be R1, R2. And then the uh, the transistor is here. It's going to be RC, RC, RE. Another voltage source, VCC. Same same as this one. 
it's the same circuit. Okay, so if you look, VCC, VCC goes to R1, VCC goes to R1, goes to R2, and then on the minor the minus side of the voltage voltage source is the ground basically. And the same thing on the other side, the same same thing, VCC to RC, VCC to RC, then it goes through the of course there's a connection here. So VCC to RC it goes through the uh, collector emitter RE and it goes to here it goes to ground but here it goes to the minus of the voltage source so those two are totally equivalent so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna i'm gonna take this circuit on the left this thing this thing and i'm gonna replace it by the i'm gonna replace with the Tebana equivalent. I'm going to replace it by the Tebana, Tebana equivalent. So how do you do that? Very easy. Remember that the Tebana equivalent is uh, it's going to be VTEV, it's going to be a voltage source going to be a voltage source and it's going to go in, into a RTEV which is the resist the equivalent resistance and then you connect that to the rest of your circuit in in our case we're going to connect to the base the base here okay so how do you do that how do you compute VTEV how do you compute VTEV you just you just compute the uh, the voltage here at your two ports okay so so here you have a voltage divider so the voltage here is vr2 so vtev is equal to r2 divided by r1 plus r2 times VCC. Okay. This is VTEV here in between those two ports. It's a voltage divider. So it's R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times VCC. And the RTEV, the R, the RTEV, how do you get that one? Basically, you short circuit you short circuit the voltage source. So, uh, if I'm looking at the circuit, you have the plus minus voltage source R1. So we are interested in those two ports here. So you have R1, R2. This is the voltage source VCC. So you get rid of all this stuff. And you put, you short it. So RTEV, if you look at it, we are looking here. What's the resistance here in between those two points? It's R1 in parallel with R2. Okay, very easy. So now, okay, let me clean up this one let let me draw it here so now this thing here this circuit is going to look like this so you still have the transistor so you're going to have rc i'm going to have to clean up here So you're going to have RC connecting to VCC. Okay, RC connect to VCC, that doesn't change. At the bottom, it's going to be uh, RE. 
and at the bottom is going to be the ground okay so you have vcc ground here and on this side it's going to be your r dev connected to your dev So this is VTEV here, this one, and this is RTEV, that one. So maybe I should redraw the whole thing. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And let's compute IB first. Let not compute, but let's get the equation for it. So if I redraw, so I have my VTEV goes into the RTEV. Uh, you have your, um, let's put the base here, collector. So it's going to be like this. At the top, you have VCC. This is RC. Here you have RE ground. Okay, so what we're going to do, okay, so this is IB, this is IE, and this is IC. So we are going to do KVL going from, um, in this branch, going from VTEV, going through RTEV, base, emitter, RE ground. So you get VTEV. So this is KVL. No? So VTEV equal RTEV times IB plus VBE. This is 0, 06 volt or 0, 07 volt, so that's constant. Plus RE IE. So far, so good. And basically, you solve for IB, and this, you assume that it's equal to IC, which is true. It's very close to being IC. So, IE equal IC, IC equal beta times IB, Beta is the, of course, the uh, also called HFE. So it's the beta, beta or HFE. Sometimes it's called. So IC equal beta IB. So this is beta IB over there. So it gives you. So okay, so. So it gives you VTEV. So RTEV is. R1 in parallel with R2, IB plus the VBE plus uh, beta RE IB. Okay, RE and IE is equal to IC and RC is equal to beta IB. Okay, so it gives you IB equals VTEV minus VBE divided by R1 in parallel with R2 plus beta RE. So that's that's the formula formula for IB. Okay, this guy. So now you can easily get IC. Because IC equal beta beta IB of course, so IC equal beta IB. It's equal to. So if I go back to my formula for IB, I just plug that into my formula for IC, and it ends up being VTEV minus VBE divided by R1 in parallel with R2 divided by beta plus RE. 
Now that's an interesting formula because we, now we can make an assumption on uh, this thing. But that's will go. Yeah, let's let's look at it right now. Um, so for IC, for IC not to depend too much on beta or HFE, this is HFE. Yeah, you don't want IC to depend on beta, otherwise all your computation are going to be uh, dependent on beta. And the beta is very uh, volatile. I mean, it's even on a, for the same transistor, it, it depends on temperature, so it can vary. So it could be 100, it could be 150, it could be, uh, I don't know, maybe even 200. So you don't want the IC to depend too much on the beta. But, and the only way this can happen is if R1 in parallel with R2 divided by beta is small when you look at Re. So it means that this term is not, uh, doesn't have any much of in, much importance it's in computing this, this value, the whole thing here. So, and uh, basically what, when we say that it must be uh, much smaller than this, it's usually we take one tenth. So we say that R1 in parallel with R2 divided by beta should be equal to one tenth of Re. Or another way to say it is that R1 in parallel with R2 equal one tenth beta Re. That's so this give us an equation because we are, we are trying to find R1 and R2 in our uh, voltage bias, bias divider. So that's, those are two unknowns, R1 and R2, R2. Uh, once Re is known, R1 and R2, this will give us an equation for R1 and R2. When we compute all the resistance, all the resist senses for the, uh, the the voltage divider bias okay at some point we'll figure out what re is going to be then we're going to have an equation for r1 and r2 okay so r1 and r2 are chosen such that this is true and this all has to do with uh, wanting this thing not to be dependent on beta too much and Therefore, I see not to be depending depending on not to be depending on beta too much. Yeah, we can also compute VCE by doing KVL on this branch, going from VCC to RC to C to E to RE and then to ground. So this vertical branch, uh, I can I can do it here, or I can get rid of all this stuff. IB we don't really care anymore. So if you do KVL on this branch, you have VCC equal RC IC plus VCE plus RE IE. IE equal IC pretty much. So you solve for VCE. So VCE equals VCC minus RC plus Re times IC. So that gives you the VCE. The VCE, VCE is used when you do the load line. So you have VCE at the bottom, IC here. And then you have all these uh, characteristic curves. So this is like different values of IB. And then Uh, you figure out the um, saturation, so this is saturation point, and this is the cutoff when IC equals zero, and then you put the operating point at the midpoint, like here. 
So if you look here, it's the same value here. So that's your VCE. Okay, so let's now move on. Okay, so let's go back to that first one, or maybe not that first one. Let's go back to the DC. So this is the everything. This is the one with DC. Because right now we only care about the DC. Okay, so now we're gonna do the we're gonna compute uh, we're gonna compute in order RC, then RE, and then R1 and R2. So let's do that. That will conclude the DC analysis. So this is my DC. Okay, so so the DC looks like this. Okay, you have R1. R2, ground, transistor, RE, and here you have RC, and VCC at the top, ground, ground, VCC, uh, you have IC, IE, IE, and IB. Okay, and here I'm kind of following the uh, what's in that uh, practical electronics for inventors. So he's doing some assumptions. So he's, he's assuming that we want AV, the voltage gain, minus 100. But this is for AC analysis. We don't really care about that at this point. He's assuming F3dB. So the attenuation, when you lose the power by half, is going to be 100, the cutoff frequency. Here, again, we don't care. This is AC stuff. This is AC. Okay, so the Kyeson point, so the IC, is saying it's going to be 1 milliamp. So this is important. So the IC is going to be 1 milliamp. That's the, the assumption. Is using HFE or beta equal 100. This is kind of a pain in the butt to, to set a beta, but you have to, otherwise you cannot compute anything. But when you when, once you get your equation, you should make sure that the, the values that you are getting do not depend too much on the on the HFE or the beta. You should compute, so now we are computing for 100, but you should comp make sure that if you use 200, uh, the values don't change that much. Okay, otherwise, it's not a good design because it depends on the, the beta of the transistor. And the VCC is doing 20 volts. So those are the assumptions. But, uh, yeah, this we don't care right now, but this we care. Okay, so the first thing. The first thing is an assumption. It's going to compute the, this is C, this is E, this is B. It's going to be an assumption. It's going to say that VC, so the voltage of the collector, is half of VCC. So in our case, it gives you 10 volts. So why does it do that? So that, uh, uh, so if you if you draw the like the load line, so you have VCE, IC, and you have those beta things, the I beta, IB, IB. I'm sorry, IB. So this is the various IB characteristic curves. Uh, so you draw the load line. So this is the cutoff. This is saturation, and you ideally you want your uh, Kyeson point to be to operating point to be at the middle. So that's why you use half. That way, when you when you put the AC, you can go either way, and you have the same response. So that's why you take half half VCC for VC. So VC equal half VCC. That's your equation. Easy. So now, now that you have the VC, you can compute RC. That's easy. 
So you have VCC. VCC. The Kirchhoff KVL. Huh? VCC equal RC IC plus VC. It gives you RC equal VCC minus VC divided by IC. Uh, so we know VCC at 20, we know VC at 10, we know IC at 1 uh, milliamp. So that gives you an RC of 10k ohms. But this is your formula basically. That's the formula. So that gives you RC. So now there's going to be a, another assumption that's going to be made, and it's going to be on VE. VE is going to say it's equal to one volt, and this is because this is for temperature stability. So VE equal one volt. So this voltage here, VE is one volt. So once you know that, you can figure out RE. Again, again, you do KVL. So you have VE equals RE IE. That's the definition. It's also RE IC because you assume that IE is equal to IC. So it gives you RE equal VE over IC. VE, we know is 1 volt. IC we know is 1 milliamp, so RE is equal to 1K. 1K ohm. So that's your equation. RE equal VE over IC. So at this point, uh, we figure out uh, RC and we figure out RE. So we have RC, we have RE. What's left is the voltage divider, R1, R2. So I'm gonna get rid of this. So we know that R1, R2 form a voltage divider. So if you take the ratio of the two resist resistances, it should be it's it's equal to the ratio of the voltages. So R1 divided by R2 is equal to VR1 divided by VR2. Oops by VR2. Okay, so VR1, what's VR1? It's VCC minus VB. VCC minus VB and VR2 is VB minus ground, so zero. Uh, VB, we know it's uh, okay. VB, VB is uh, so VB is VB again KVL. VB is equal to VBE plus le VE. VBE is 0.6 volts, 0.6, and VE we just computed it it's one or not computed it's assumed to be one so and VCC we know so we all set here yeah. so that gives you R1 over R2 is equal to so VCC is 20 VB is equal to 1.6 so 1.6 here 1.6 there it gives you R1 over R2 is equal to 11.5. So, so, okay, so that's one equation. But remember, when we did the DC analysis with that, uh, and we were computing IC. Okay, let me get it back. We were computing, computing IC 
And then we said that for IC not to be too dependent on beta, we should have this. So let me copy that. R1 parallel with R2 is equal to 110 beta RE. So we know RE, huh? we know beta. So that's your second equation. So we have two equations, two equations to solve to solve for R1 and R2. So that gives us, and of course R1 parallel R2 is R1 R2. This is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, so it, it gives you R, R2 equal 10k, 10k ohms, and R1, R1 is 11.5 times R2, gives you 115, 115k ohm. So at this point, if we go back to the, yeah, let's go back to the, to the original one. So we computed RC, that's done. We, we got RE, so that's done. And we just got R1 and R2. So all that's left is computing R3, C1, and C2. And we're going to do that in the next video. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. So uh, if you like this kind of content, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will make more. Of course, I'm going to do the next one about the AC analysis. That I have to do. All right, see you.